I've begun with pencil and this is how this drawing should always begin with your eye level, your vanishing point right on the paper and your parameters. I'm going to start at the bottom here of my light fixture and I have to be a little farther away from this than I would like to be so it it's not going to be very accurate but I'm hoping that you'll get an idea anyway of what it is you need to do so right now I need to find the center of this because remember it's above eye level so I'm going to see the underside of my light and I can't tell that from my reference picture not at all this is a silhouette it's an elevation almost of my light fixture so I guess the eye levels may be somewhere around here because this opens up that way this opens up down this way so I think uh, but mine is not like that I'm seeing it right from below and now I know where the center of that is by making an X so and I've already got the center line. The center line of the gable is the center line of my light fixture. So right there, that's where this, this little doohickey has to hang down. Next thing I have to find is an ellipse for this. So I'm just going to eyeball it and I already did my quick sketch so I have an idea of where I might want this to go. And I'm trying to make it as straight as I can, but you'll forgive me if it's not. So I'm working on the front of the box. Now we need my vanishing point to see where that, how that recedes, what that's going to look like when it recedes. And, and this way for it to recede. And I go across, trying to make things straight. And now I have a box I can use to make my ellipse. And you'll all recall how we do that. We did so much of that when we drew our geometric shape. So hopefully that has stayed with you. This line is like this, but you also need this. I'll be using this diagram a lot throughout this drawing because I need to I need those arcs. Remember my concept, my visual concept is that I want to add some soft touches to this very square and a little bit pointy room. So I'm going to move from my outer edge. This is what I really need. I need this curve. So I'm just going to put a vertical and double line that so I have my my curve I'm looking for this and it looks like it has some little some filigree of some kind or another all over it so I can put a little bit of that decorative stuff now I have the center of the bottom and that little doodad and all I have to do now is make a little bit of a curve down here because it's round so I'm going to make a little curve and follow that curve all the way up to the side to make this round at the bottom. I can also curve this to give me a better feel for that And when I ink this in, I'll enhance this by adding all of the lines that come down like this and curve in all the lines of the lights. And these will curve that way at the back. So but that's okay for now. Again, there's a little bit of a sense of um, doing it loosely enough that things could change. There's the hardware as it attaches to the ceiling. Put a little spriggit there. And then I've got a sphere, an actual sphere that I can eyeball. This is small. Your drawings are larger so you wouldn't maybe eyeball this. You might put the diagram up so you could see. And then just like down here, 
I'm seeing that this will overlap that. So the actual circumference of this sphere would go like that, this one at the top. So I'm putting this in, this area here. And now it's just a matter of bringing this down and flaring it out to the outer edge. And I'm thinking about symmetry the whole time. If I put this straight line down, is it the same distance from here to here? And from here to here, is it the same distance? So that's a more accurate rendition than what I had on my quick sketch. And these will all go this way. And I've got this line as a guide. And these will all come down like this with the straight line in the middle. And I'd be able to fill that in. Okay. Now, the next idea that has to go on here is that of my, I'll just repair my gable a little bit, and it's a good idea to take hidden lines that have no place in this light fixture, to take them out now so that you don't mistakenly put them in. So I'm going to take that gable out right now. so that I can see that. There's my light fixture. There is a little sense of straightness here, and then it, it swoops in. So I might do a little bit more of that. I think I might go a little wider here. So you're constantly looking back and forth between your reference picture and what you've done with it. Okay, now I'm just seeing what will happen when I put some of these across because they will go across. So the more accurate you can make this now in pencil, the better it will be when you... And drawing from life is a huge help in this area because I've done so much of it, I have an idea of how this should look in my mind's eye. So that you can't really go too long without realizing that it's important to sketch all the time. Whenever you've got a free moment, doesn't have to be anything in particular, doesn't have to be furniture, just sketching anything in front of you to get a feel for how to balance things out and how to make things symmetrical. I have this high gable so I can move this up a little higher. Again, now, there are parts of this I can't really see, so you'll forgive me, hopefully. And if you have your parallel rule and your set square, that will help you to get things straight. By all means, use it. Otherwise, you'll end up in, a, in the same shape as me here. Just, I never really liked the way the arm of the chair and that lined up, but I, I know from my quick sketch that's not going to be a problem for me because I've got that chaise rather than a, an arm there. And we've 
got quite a bit of molding. I'll, I won't put all of it in. I'll just put some. I'll just put a little bit of an idea about how much space it's going to take up. And then I have my my arc and my arc it should come down to about there so if I just rough it out before I make it more accurate it's facing me so it won't be difficult to make it more accurate it's just that it's um, quite involved so I want to get at least the outer curve correct before I go down a little further. What I'm trying to gauge is how deep a semicircle do I need up there. So I could try it this way. I could try going this way. Now all I need is to know where this arc, where, where it should be on the other side, what height it should be on the other side at this point. And there's my mark. I can do that in several places to see where that should be. So I know I'm going to make an arc that just goes from here to here. And if you're really great at using the French curves, oops, I should have done this. If you're really great at using the French curves, then by all means use them. So this is where it should be right across okay so that's okay so when I'm inking this in I'll be really happy to find a French curve that can help me out so I'm keeping an eye see this is what I was talking about of, about in terms of keeping symmetry you want to keep your symmetry always keep your watching for symmetry that's that's what will throw your whole image off is the lack of symmetry. Especially in one point perspective, that's where we see it the most. So this is it's wider, is wider than the others. So we can go a little bit thinner here. Oops. even more thickness so we'll just add a little bit more thickness here brings my blinds down quite low if I want to hang them from here. But I don't think that's too big a problem. In fact, I could probably hang them right from there. and just leave this showing this arc and then when i put my draperies in you see that you don't leave anything out in this drawing you put everything in i don't think i'll let that i want to show my tassel if you remember i have my tassel so i want to be able to show that but on this drawing everything goes in and then you leave out what you don't want us to see when you ink in. I'd like to see a little bit of that. 
so I'm going to just, this is hung like this so that you can see the tassel. They're huge tassels. And again, you keep trying to, not to tickle things in place, but to actually make a definite line. That's a little risky to cover off where those two meet, but I'll try it. And if I don't like it, I can always change it when I'm inking in. So that'll do for now. And I have pinch pleats, so I have to show a little V. And this rounds out into folds. I don't have to put them all in, and in fact it would look dreadful if I did try to do that. So you just put in enough to show, and usually you start them down here and use kind of an implied line to allow them to move up to the top. So this will all be covered, but it was important that it be there, that it will look more convincing when I do the rest. I'm still deciding where to put the blinds, whether I want to, I think I might hang them lower. And as I mentioned, if you're doing this or something similar, and you need to get rid of some of those lines, uh, by all means, get rid of them as you go, so that they're not getting in your way of understanding what it is that you're doing. So maybe this side I don't cover that up. And uh, I would go in and put all those in, but I won't, I won't do that now. Just so we have, and then we have where our, our blinds are going to end. We want to put some mullions in, so we want to just stop this blind and put some that's why I'm hesitating about how how much room to leave up here because um, I doesn't give me much room for the blinds but we've got some lines already so we can put those in 